Hi all, welcome to Frank Banket Podcast, a knowledge sharing platform for banking, finance and technologies. As we all live in a technology world, I cannot miss out this topic, metaverse and banking. Hi Amit. Hi Bala, so interesting choice of okay. topic. So lots of uh, noise going around uh, metaverse and what is metaverse all about uh, Amit? So we are picking up from science fiction now and uh, over a period of time, historically we have seen science fiction tends to you know uh, become reality at some point of time so it derives from uh, an early 1990s novel called snow crash uh, which which imagined human beings and having their avatars and they are programmed and they can interact with uh, with each other in in certain circumstances so that's where we are we are driving it uh, but in nutshell uh, what we are talking about is uh, uh, metaverse being a 3D virtual place where you can have a second life, where you can uh, you know imagine and fulfill all your imaginations and 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 and, and interact with people as well. So that is what we are talking about uh, when we try to define define metaverse. Okay, I mean I have been playing games in my younger days, and uh, games are there been there for a very long time now. So what is that great difference now? I think uh, the noise has increased because. Uh, a you know, couple of years back when Facebook announced that they are focusing on Metaverse and they changed their name to Meta, I think that catalyzed quite a, uh, quite a, uh, uh, quite a few uh, people to imagine what is possible in a virtual, uh, virtual world. Right? So now, therefore, you have many, many platforms where you can go and you know create your avatars and and have a interaction and as i said live 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 a different life altogether okay imagination fulfill your imagination platforms like decentraland roblox upland uh, and uh, uh, sandbox second life that's that's also a name of the platform so as we move forward from games and avatars what has happened now is we are talking about some real use cases. Okay. Right? We are also talking about uh, how do we monetize or create digital assets. Okay. So these are the two things which are coming in and which have started bringing in the the economic aspect uh, okay. on the on the metaverse beyond the gaming and the entertainment uh, function. Okay. So now what we are saying is in metaverse you can avail services, you can provide services, you can have retail stores. Okay. Uh, you can uh, maybe have clubs. You okay. can have concerts. You can also also possibly visit a branch, okay. bank branch. Okay, sounds interesting, Amit. Amit, is it uh, possible to scale up, or this is going to be only experimental as of now? As of now, I would say it is much of it is experimentation. Uh, in banking, for example, uh, J.P. Morgan launched quite some time back a uh, customer lounge, right? And uh, and 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 there are other other banks, other financial institutions also trying to you know make their presence on the metaverse. But uh, there are there are challenges in the in the scalability. But from a use case point of view, just to highlight, so for example, you can have uh, real estate, and instead of going to that particular property, you possibly can have a virtual tour of the property okay. a 3d virtual tour so that's one use case you can go to a virtual car dealership okay. and check out the car that you 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 want to buy you can go to a retail store and check out the garments how they fit okay. uh, possibly on your on your avatar there right? that is that is what is happening so there are uh, you know uh, there are use cases which are getting built up okay. over a period of time but for this to become a really scaled up uh, you know mm. platform uh, there are there are few enablers which which need to be there. Okay, mm. okay. So when you say enablers, can you mention a little more in detail? Uh, so see, metaverse is not one thing. It's it's a mix of multiple things coming together, and okay. that is what will make it uh, scalable. Okay. So when I say enablers, uh, there are many things which are again there, and but broadly, if I have to just you know condense it and put it. Uh, into few few bucket for simplification i would say there are primarily four things that we are talking about okay one of course is how the technology development happens okay so the technology as an enabler that's okay. one part okay. of it second is what is the experience there so 
the imagination can be an enabler there. But what I'm talking about is how realistic is the experience in metaverse. Okay. So that's the second uh, part of it. The third part of it is also around the the economic structures and the regulatory structures, okay. uh, which need to be you know aligned with what imagination is taking us uh, in in the metaverse. And the <clears throat> last uh, uh, part is also about the security, the privacy. Uh, the identity on 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 metaverse right okay. so these are the four enablers which are which are uh, essential for metaverse to become really really scaled up now if i remember there is a gartner report uh, i think uh, last year which said uh, which predicted that uh, by 2026 there will be you know uh, metaverse usage will increase and at least 25% of the people will be spending one hour or more on 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 metaverse and there is a momentum on all all these four categories that we that i talked about okay i mean uh, let's talk about each of this topic okay okay so first uh, yeah first of course then we are talking about technology there right so as far as technology is concerned see uh, uh, for metaverse to become really really a good experience uh, you need to have good graphics if you need to have good graphics, you are talking about a higher GPU power, okay. right? Higher computing power. That is what you are. Uh, then, for it to be, uh, you know, really useful, you should have the ability to access it from a anywhere. So we are talking about connectivity, and all this will produce a huge amount of data, and that data flow also needs to be managed in. In, in models which are beyond your you know centralized cloud computing model so we are talking about uh, edge computing or fog computing as they say so these are these are some of the technologies which need to go at a faster pace for metaverse to start becoming more refined as a, okay. as, a as a proposition and there is more to it so for example uh, one use case of metaverse is uh, where you can create a digital twin of a let's say a complex machine Okay. Let's say an aircraft engine or or any other machine in a in in, in a factory. Okay. Right? And you want to monitor it in real time. Okay. So you create a digital twin, which is a virtual uh, representation of the machine itself, okay. and you 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 are seeing the real time data of what is happening in the machinery. Okay. That's that right. means what are we talking about? You are talking about advanced IoT and sensors being used. So if that evolves to a level where you have such kind of a predictability, such kind of a width of information, then metaverse use cases will will go at a faster uh, faster pace okay so so on the technology side that is that is what what broad directions that you need yeah okay uh, so amit uh, the second one is about uh, realistic experience yeah so we are talking about how do you match your uh, uh, real world or the physical world with the uh, virtual world and closer they are in terms of the experience right Better it is for uh, for it to you know become more scaled up and more adapted. So you mean augmented reality, mixed reality, extended reality, etc. Exactly, yeah. So that that's that's an important part of it. Your augmented reality and your VR and your XR, right? And uh, we have seen use cases around uh, around that, right? So for example, you want to buy a sofa and you want to check whether it will fit into my living room. Okay. Yeah, that that uh, I have seen in some of the e-commerce companies. Exactly, yeah, jewelry, those yeah, jewels. those are those are simply simplified uh, implementations of some of these, right? Or you can want to take a boat ride on a, um, under a full moon one night, and you put on those uh, you know oculars or your Vision Pro glasses, and then you you can have that uh, that that experience. But what I'm saying is that for this to become really engaging, immersive. You need to go one more step further. Your dependence on the accessories that you need to have, right? If you can start minimizing them, so what we call as uh, auto stereoscopy, where you are saying how you transition from real world to the uh, virtual world and vice versa. If it can be seamless without you know dependence on too many you know uh, accessories, that will be really really great boost for meta metaverse adoption. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, Amit. Let's talk about the third bucket. Uh, economic structure readiness yeah very very crucial part of it right and that is not a part that uh, you know i read or uh, you know i heard often uh, around around metaverse but but you see that as metaverse catches metaverse catches on what we are talking about a new kind of models will evolve okay and they are evolving right as we said that you can set up virtual shops right so when you start doing commerce on metaverse what happens is you are talking about sanctity of contracts hmm, okay right you are talking about conflict resolution 
competitive uh, aspects to be to be addressed at how do you then manage this right? okay. what are the ways in which you will you will manage there has to be some kind of a legal framework then another aspect is around payments how would you settle the transactions there what would be the modes of transaction there because when you in a virtual world there are no geographical limitations right you can go anywhere from anywhere so how do you manage uh, how do you manage that then how do you ensure that the del- the delivery or the services which are done Uh, they are they are done as per the uh, as per the agreements uh, between the parties so that means in the economic structure you need to build in those enablers elsewhere the payment structures the contract structures the resolution structures and so on and so forth somebody has to do possibly you we might have assets in uh, metaverse and how do you value those assets okay how do you monetize those assets right so that is a very very crucial part if that evolves and moves at a faster pace i think metaverse adoption can be can be much more quicker sounds good so i mean and lastly uh, what about identity and privacy issues very very crucial bala very very crucial imagine you are going and you know doing a transaction on uh, on on metaverse and there is a thief following you or somebody steals or more simply somebody steals your identity and represents you uh, on metaverse as as the use cases evolve uh, therefore privacy security identity becomes very 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 crucial and especially for banking that is the core right you need to have a situation you cannot have a situation where in your security or your identity is is compromised so that will kill the whole use case uh, around it so that is the center of uh, you know center of the whole metaverse debate uh, that that we are having okay okay is there a solution insight for the identity piece yeah yeah but i think blockchain provides hmm. that uh, that solution we have discussed this in the blockchain episode yeah yeah previously yeah so that is uh, that that provides uh, the uh, solution there and there is a concept very interestingly but there is a concept of something called as digital twin of a no. person oh okay okay D- dtop okay so bala in physical world okay uh, and bala in the virtual world okay that's your twin on the virtual world okay. and i'm not talking about only avatar what i'm saying is the identifiers of bala in the physical world and the identifiers of bala in the virtual world are verifiable okay okay so if you have a digital twin of a person there and it is identified and it cannot it, it is well protected then you have a good 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 solution for how how you going to you know engage in 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 metaverse okay okay so i mean i'm trying to understand about uh, payments and asset ownerships and there are challenges also right so payments and asset ownership as i said right there are challenges uh, for example uh, uh, you know payments i would say uh, can be solved uh, because as i said there is no limit geographical limit to what can happen on on and metaverse but can be solved i think with cryptos um, or maybe cbdcs nfts so these are some solutions which are there as for the payments so i think it is solvable it only requires some bit of a legal framework around it how do you want to solve it right so that's a solvable piece in in my in my understanding but i think from an asset uh, ownership point of view the bigger challenge which comes in is uh, on interoperability uh, operability between the between the platforms right so let's say you have a asset in decentraland which is one of the platform how do you leverage the same asset the virtual asset in um, let's say the sandbox so the interoperability is something that that needs to be sorted there is not standardization as of now so would i need to buy a similar kind of assets everywhere can i move it from one place to another for example a bank would they need to put branches in all of the platforms separately right so these are some of the questions that means more investment has to be done and development has to be done and so so forth that means the value of a, a asset also gets uh, you know limited because it is restricted by the by the by the platform so these are some of the challenges which are there okay. and if we can we can bring in the interoperability solution okay that will again be a good boost to what can happen on metaverse uh, uh, amit let us discuss little more detail i think uh, scalability in banking will be the challenge Uh, in line with metaverse yeah if you are not able to secure it well then scalability is also also a challenge because you know for banking um, scalability is one part of it it has to be supported by 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 the security and unless you fix both these things together you cannot have a scalable uh, bank uh, banking banking model there is an example that i remember which was uh, uh, i think mid 2000s wherein there was a 
financial uh, you know fraud which happened on uh, on, okay. on on metaverse ginkgo financials okay. and they launched a metaverse bank correct okay, okay? Uh, an unregulated entity and then they said they'll give a 30 40% return and and if i remember correctly around 200 million got got wiped off because they okay. closed the operation nobody to my to my understanding was able to identify where where it went so there are uh, there are these challenges have to be done because unless the banking is about trust unless and until the platform and metaverse as a you know larger platform unless and until that provides that ecosystem of trust it is very difficult for you to go full fledged full hog in 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 banking but as i said earlier see out of the four buckets that we talked about this is one of the important buckets and there is a movement there is a debate there is a discussion happening around it so it's, that's why i said you know 5 10 years my assumption is we should be able to sort some of the things things and for banks therefore it is important that they start experimenting and you know started making their presence there on the metaverse right away so that that experience will enrich them over a period of time when the real time for scale up comes okay so i mean what is the future of metaverse from a banking perspective there's no limit to the imagination you can okay. imagine imagine so for example i, I imagine a, a situation wherein i want to go to a branch and i can walk Uh, with my digital twin into the into the branch and in the in the in, in, into the branch then i possibly go to an atm oh. and there is a digital twin of the atm okay. right digital twin of the machine and i can do a transaction there or i can uh, speak to my relationship manager there which is again a, a digital twin of the rm and we are we are talking about this so 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 there is no limit to what you can imagine and what you can do on 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 metaverse you can say why do i need to go to metaverse to do this transaction internet banking is there but it's 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 boring right doing internet banking it, it's not personalized it's not customized there are limitations of what you can do with browser windows so metaverse provides that flexibility that scale up which can happen representing your real physical world very very closely in a virtual uh what what you will want so there is no limit to it. and and if i to push my imagination further maybe tomorrow you want to speak to your banker and you are sitting in your office and you say why don't you come and visit and banker comes and visits uh, you know gives you a visit within seconds how you possibly have a small device there and the and the hologram comes up so you can have a holographic conversation with amazing. your amazing i'm a, you know with, so there is no limit to how much you can imagine and some of these bits and pieces are already there okay right it's only only about you know what what level of refinement what level of scaling you can do and what level of security privacy etc that you can protect so that's why i said those four buckets are the are the crucial pieces in the whole puzzle okay interesting so amit we covered more or less the complete metaverse and banking yeah i i think i think future we have a very exciting future i am looking forward to some of these experimentations which the banks uh, banks are trying superb superb so viewers spider man and doctor strange have been there already it is a time for bankers to get ready for the metaverse keep following frank banker podcast and get ready for the future do like share and subscribe thank you all